Hello, everyone. This is News Now from the Belmont Journal. I'm Mike Crowley and Lisa Gibellario of the Wayside Youth and Family Support Network is with us again today. Lisa is also coordinator of the Belmont Wellness Coalition. So happy to see you today, uh, Lisa. Thank you, Michael. Happy to be here. All right. So today, Lisa, we're talking about hate speech and, you know, it's something that I personally believe it's really important to educate ourselves about. Um, so Lisa, I do want to ask you, um, when when we say hate speech, the the term, you know, how we typically use it, um, what are we what are we talking about? So legal definitions do vary, Mike, but I would say it's basically speech that's recognized to be harmful or and derogatory. So it's communication that attacks a person or a group of people based on race, religion, gender, ethnicity, sexual orientation. And it often includes things that are, you know, insulting, threatening, slurs. It's really speech or communication that's intended to incite hatred. So how do we see this happening? Um, where, where do we typically see it, Lisa? Well, it's definitely spread on social media platforms. Uh, content can go viral rapidly. It's not that well regulated, but closer to home, Mike, there have been incidences of hate speech found on our own school properties, um, mostly in the form of racial slurs. That's really unfortunate. Um, you know, in, in thinking about parents and you know, how they might talk to their kids about best practices um, involving hate speech. Well, what can we tell parents, Lisa? So that's a great question. And I would say, first off, the processing of these events will depend largely on the age of your kids. You'll want to speak in terms that are developmentally appropriate. Also, one should consider their own level of upsetness. You know, some kids are inherently more sensitive than others and therefore will be more upset than others. Um, but questions to start off the conversation could be, you know, how did you feel about when you heard about this incident, when you heard about what was written somewhere? You know, invalidate what you hear if they say they were angry or sad. Um, also, to that point, val you know, own your own feelings with your children. If you're feeling particularly angry, upset, irritated, you know, own that. Let your kids know that you do feel upset. Um, also, Mike, the professionals will tell us that if you start to talk about terms like racism, bias, privilege, discrimination, just make sure you understand the terminology that you're using. And again, make sure it's appropriate for the age level of your children. All right, Lisa. Um, anything else to add while we're talking about hate speech? Well, just that as upsetting as these incidents are, they do provide families with an opportunity to explore racism and privilege and bias and, and, and also how your kids can be upstanders in the community. So it's a way to start the conversation and talking about it conveys to your children that this is important, that this matters. So I think these should not be one-off conversations. They should definitely be ongoing conversations. And good things to talk about, Mike, are what they're seeing on TV. What are they, what's in their books? You know, what are they encountering on social media, as well as among their own friend groups and at their own schools? You know, they can talk also about the responses that they're seeing from this community and their school community and their friend group. So, you know, as, as upsetting as these are, they do provide families with an opportunity to really explore important topics. Um, and again, by having the conversations, you're saying to your kids, this matters and let's talk about it. Well, we, we certainly appreciate your advice, um, Lisa, and um, we will keep the conversation going on this and other topics in weeks to come. So. We hope to see you next time. Thank you.